It's Wednesday, my dudes. What is going on, everybody? It is Bryce Builds It All, your favorite AMP, IA, and Part 147 instructor, back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about three mistakes, and it's actually gonna be more than that, but three mistakes that I see students making when they study for their oral and practical test. I will say right now, we just had a class block out of airframe and they are beginning to go test. So far, they are all doing very well. I've had four students finish their A. I'm also getting all kinds of feedback from the Discord. So thanks to everybody in the Discord who's you know told me that they got their AMP. Wish them a happy congratulations from your desktop, your phone, or wherever it is that you are. But I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. So my first mistake is simply it's not studying what you think you already know. And I know that sounds weird, but I was guilty of it when I was a student. I felt like I knew paints and finishes. I felt like I understood paint. I understand, I understood, you know, water-based, acetone, lacquer, like I got it. I got orange peel, I got fish eyes. I know what all of this stuff is. I don't need to study it. And under the old system, you got to paints and finishes and it was his own section. So I got to paints and finishes and the DME asked me two questions in a row and I went, yeah, and immediately I was like, this is this is not gonna go well. And I got in my own head and he asked me four or five really hard questions in a row. And I think it was like the sixth question, sixth or seventh question. He looked up at me and he moved on. And I was like, okay, either I passed it or I didn't, but I'm gonna find that out very soon. Fortunately under the ACS, now your oral is asked altogether and, and you don't really have to so much worry about failing one section altogether, but I did. And my point there is don't overlook the things that you think you know. Make sure you read through those oral questions and at a minimum understand every single one of them and memorize them somewhat so that when the DME asks you a question, you're going to be ready for those questions. Now, my second thing, there is a lot of information here for you to study. There's a lot of things that you're going to need to go through. So you want to make sure weeks in advance, months in advance, you have put together a plan for studying. What I see too often is people starting too late. They schedule their O's and P's for a week or two from now, and then they try to cram everything in in the last minute. And there are so many questions and so much information that you're trying to push in, you're not going to get it all in and you're not gonna do very good on the test. Or you might do okay on the test, but you're just making it harder on yourself. So if you sit back months in advance, two, three months in advance and say, I'm gonna come up with a plan. And for me, I, did, I took it all at once. I took about six weeks of my life after I graduated school and just devoted to studying. Fortunately for me, I had a financial plan. I was able to do that. You might not be able to, and you might have to study while you're in class. But I came up with a plan and said each day, I'm gonna hit this goal. I'm gonna get this section done today, this section done tomorrow, these two sections done the next day. And I had a plan on how much I was going to study until I got through every single one of those things. And it really helped me greatly. When you wait to the last minute and then you try to push in 650 questions for general, it's not gonna go the way you think it's gonna go. So make sure you come up with a plan and make sure you start studying early. The third thing I see people doing a lot is trying to multitask or trying to juggle home life and studying at the same time. I get it, we're all adults. Well, most of us are adults and we've got lives. We've got kids, we've got responsibilities, we've got other things going on but you're gonna have to carve out some time alone, not in your bedroom, not on, the, not on the sofa, not while you watch your favorite YouTuber, which we all know is me, not while you watch your favorite YouTuber making videos, you're gonna have to carve out some time in a quiet room with some gentle music on that you don't sing along to, to sit there and really study the questions and really understand the material. If you're going through trying to multitask, you're trying to do the dishes while you study, you're not gonna have a good time and you're not gonna have good luck with that it's gonna be so much better if you can carve out time to study in a quiet room. Now, where might that be? You're saying, well, thanks for the, thanks for the solution, Bryce, but I don't, I, where's the problem, right? If you're already in school for it, if you can get to school early or during break or during lunch, instead of going out with the boys to shoot pool or go out for lunch or whatever it is, if you can take those 30 minute to one hour windows throughout your day at school and go to a classroom or a study room, a library, wherever it is, and sit there with your flashcards or whatever it is you're trying to study and go through it, you're gonna have pretty good luck. I've had a couple of students that do that. During break, they study in the classroom. When I give them a test on a Friday or whatever it is, and they're allowed, they're allowed to leave early, they don't leave early. They stay behind till 3.30, they spend a couple hours studying the questions over months, not the week before you test, 
over months, right? So don't, don't get wrapped up in trying to do other things and study for your oral and practical test. All right, a fourth bonus thing that I'm going to put out there for you is not getting started soon enough. I'm gonna caveat that by saying it's never too late. I went to school with guys who come back because they went to school where I teach. I went to school with guys here who come back seven years, eight, nine years later and are like, hey, I wanna get my certificate because I wanna get my A&P. The longer you let that ball sit, the heavier it's gonna get to pick up. You wanna strike while the iron's hot. You wanna strike while you're fresh out of school. You don't wanna wait 10 or 15 years to start studying and get your A&P test. I understand, maybe you gotta get out there, you gotta get a job, you gotta start making money, that's how it was for me, but like I said, I made a plan early, I, was, I had had some financial independence there, and I planned to take till the end of January to get my A&P, and that's what I did. But if you wait, you go get a job somewhere and you start working as a mechanic, but you never take your test, it's going to be harder to start studying that material again because now you're having to relearn everything. When you're in school and when it's fresh, you can strike while the iron's hot and get it done. All right, everybody. I realize this has been a little bit of a short video, but I do appreciate you for watching. That's gonna do it all for this one. Drop in the comments below how you study. What's, what are some tips you have for people? What are some things you have to say for people? I'll add this, because I do get asked this question a lot. It doesn't matter if your certificates of completion of a 147 school are from 1995. They are still good. If you went through a 147 school and you got your certificate of completion, that is still good and you can still go use, to, use that to test 30 years later, right? But with that being said, leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, go follow me on Instagram, join the Discord. I don't have a Facebook or anything. Shoot me an email. Whatever brings you joy and happiness in your heart. Have a good Wednesday. Go build something and be easy.